everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial for the World Eaters. And of course, you've already figured it out by now. We are painting the World Eater. We are painting the Primarch himself, Angron, who has returned in demonic form. And he looks absolutely fantastic. This was sent to me early by Games Workshop to build up, paint and review for all of you. And a massive thank you to them because we've been looking forward to this one for a while. And he's absolutely stunning just breathtaking miniature to behold so what we're going to do is we're going to just jump in now we're going to start painting him he's been primed in gray sear and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dividing him into two sections now they're two kind of uneven sections they are the wings and then angron which doesn't seem like it's going to be you know too much of a division of labor but the wings are something that we can just get out of the way as we've got some slightly trickier areas to get to in here for example um, but we want to get them done and then we can work on Angron rather than trying to kind of manage all of the red at the same time for example it just makes sense to me to do it this way so that is exactly what we're going to do and as mentioned he is in Gracia which is different to the rest of the world as they have been done in Wraithbone but the reason he's been done in Gracia is we want him to be a little bit more menacing and we can add a little bit of extra warmth in there in fact, all of this product photography does indicate that he is a little bit colder than the rest of the world eaters, at least. So, it's time to start. And we are going to start with those wings, as mentioned. And the colour we're going to be using first is Black Legion. And we're just going to grab this up on our brush. And we're going to start painting this over the top of the wing membranes. Just like this. Now, you don't want to get this on the spines excluding this one here, this one's fine, because that one is also going to be black. And if you're feeling a little spicy, you can color in the hair just there as well. That is of course entirely up to you. And the thing to bear in mind when you're doing this is Black Legion is one of those really lovely paints that goes on nice and smooth means you can do large areas in black very quickly however what that does mean is it means you can get a little bit carried away so you don't want too much on your brush at once you just want to go back to the pop frequently rather than kind of really load the brush up because what happens is gravity will take hold it will run all the paint to the bottom and then you'll get these dried drips which you really don't want. So just do as I'm doing here. In small amounts. Just working your way along. Just like this. So with that Black Legion all applied to the wings, what we're then going to do is take some null Oil and we're going to apply this over the top of the wing membranes. And this spine, we're not going to apply this over the top of the hair. So with that null oil all applied to both sides and both of the wings, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a dry brush and we're going to add a dry brush of Skaven Blight Dinge. And we're just going to very gently build this up 
over the wings. So with that Skaven Blight Dinge dry brush applied, what we then do is take some Storm Vermin Fur and we're going to do a very, very gentle dry brush here. Just catching the ridges. And with that Storm Vermin Fur dry brush applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to add some really sharp highlights in here now. So areas such as this particular spine. I want to draw a line comes all the way down. Like that. We're going to do Dawnstone highlights on all of our little veins and things. We've got one right here, which we'll do. And we're going to add this over the hair, which you've probably already dry brushed, but we just want to add a little bit of extra colour into it. Just like that. And over the top of kind of the outward facing ridges, we want to add a little bit of Dawnstone. Just in place, it doesn't have to be on all of them, just anywhere where you want the light to catch. So with that Dawnstone all applied, we then take some Administratum Grey. And on our veins and things, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little dots and lines where the capillaries kind of branch out. So with that now done, the wing membranes are finished. So what we're going to do is move on to our next colour, and that is going to be the red. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly two parts Blood Angels red to one part contrast medium mix. Now we're not going to be painting this all over Angron, we're just going to come down to this kind of armpit of the wing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start painting this all over. And the reason we've got that two to one mix is just to make it so that our Blood Angels red flows a little bit nicer. Just 
makes it a bit easier for doing the wider muscles and things this size. Now, don't worry if it's a little bit weak. We are going to fix that. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same thing again. A roughly two parts Blood Angels Red to one part Contrast Medium Mix. And this is where you're going to see that real Blood Angels ready colour come in now. So with that all done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Volupus Pink and Contrast Medium. I'm going to use this to add that kind of pinky texture around the wrist. So we're going to apply this over the top like this. All over this little collection of joints and bones and things. And then we're going to bring it down the arm just a little bit to around about halfway like that and then we're going to wash the brush and then with a clean brush we're going to smooth out the transition just like that And then what we're also going to do with this Volupus Pink is we're going to paint this along the spines. Again, we're just getting it on here. I'm going to wash the brush. And then smooth out the transition like so. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Sigvald Burgundy on its own. And we're going to apply this over the top of this little section up here. And the knuckles. Like this. And then we're going to once again do a tiny little bit of blending. We're just going to come out to about halfway of what we've already done. Wash the brush. And then we smooth it out. Like so. So with that done, we've now got this beautiful shaded red and pink, but what we need to do now is brighten it back up. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a roughly two parts pink horror to one part scream of pink mix and we're going to use this over the top of the wing spines and those knuckles but up here what we're going to do is we're going to effectively do a bit of a relayer job over the kind of raised parts of the joint Like that sort of thing. Whereas on the rest of it, just want to do quite a wide highlight. So when it comes to these kind of knuckle pieces, Just going to relayer it, whereas over the top of the spine, 
I'm gonna do that little highlight just like I did there. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some pink horror on its own. Just removing the screamer pink element here. And we're now gonna use this to highlight all of our spines. Again, just excluding the armored ones at the top. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some squig orange and we're going to gently dry brush this over the armoured areas. Or the top spine. And so with that done, we then take some Cadian Flesh Stone and we're just going to add this to the top parts. At the apex of these ridged areas, like this sort of thing. So with that done, the red of the wings is now complete and it looks absolutely fantastic. So what we're going to do is now move on to the next part of the wings, which is all of these claws. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use two colours, but we're going to just go for the first one being Rattling Grime. And we're just going to apply this nice and simply over the top. Just like that. So with that rattling grime all applied, we then take Black Templar. Let me apply this over the top. So with that Black Templar applied, what we then do is take some Dawnstone and we're going to use this to highlight all of those talons. This is going to be a little bit tricky, you're going to want to hold on, as always these details, at the top of such a large model like this. So with that Dawnstone applied, we then take some Administratum Grey. We apply this towards the tips. Of each of the claws. So with that done, all of the main features of Angron's wings are finished. The only thing we haven't done is all of the jewellery and stuff, like the bits hanging off the wings. And that's okay, because we're going to leave that for now, because I bet you're bored of looking at just painted wings. 
and now you want to get on with the rest of your miniature so that's exactly what we're going to do now the color we're going to be using is blood angels red and we're just going to go straight in here over the top of all of the flesh and we only need to do one layer of this because you've not kind of got lots of big open spaces to worry about the only area where you might struggle a bit is on the tail if you want to you can just thin this down with a little bit of contrast medium when you come to getting it all over the tail but for now you just want to start painting this blood angel's red all over the top of all of Angron's skin and don't worry too much about making any mistakes at this point if you do just go back in and tidy it up with some grey here. So with that Blood Angels Red now applied to all of his flesh, what we're going to do now is we're going to shade it. The colour we're going to be using for this is Berserk Blood Shade. So with all of that Berserker blood shade now applied, we've got this really awesome red skin. So we're gonna move on just for now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Black Legion and we're gonna use this on all of Angron's black features. So we're looking for things like the hair, his hooves, any claws, talons, any spikes. There are additional black details, but just for now, just so we're keeping track of painting the miniature. So with all of that Black Legion applied to all of these details, as you can see, what we're now going to do is work on his most prominent colour, which is going to be Rune Lord Brass. And this is going to be for all of the armour. Now, ultimately, there's no real science here. It's just getting it all over all of these details. But the reason we're doing it now, not after we've done a bunch of the other colors, is this will just give you an indication of how much is left because there is a lot of brass. So I'd recommend having the box art or the product photography in front of you as you do this. Because there is a lot of brass. Maybe they should change Rune Lord Brass to World Eaters Brass. Wouldn't that be something? Oh boy, that's a lot of brass. <laughs> I did warn you, it's a whole lot of brass. So, now he's really shiny, what we're going to do is make him unshiny. <laughs> and the colour we're going to be using to do that is Agrax Earthshade. And we're just going to apply this over the top of all that Rude Lord Brass. So with that done, what we have is got beautifully shaded armor all over him. But what we want to do is we want to continue darkening it down, but we want to preserve some of the shine. So what we want to do is we want to take a roughly two parts Castellax bronze to one part Rune Lord brass mix. And we're going to apply this over the flats of his largest panels. 
So for example, just down here, we're just going to start applying this like this. And this is about the same color as the shaded Rune Lord brass. But this is just going to make it a little bit shiny. Smooth out any inconsistencies and add a little bit of depth to the model. For example, see this panel just here? We just want to do this on the flats of his armor. You don't need to worry about the trim. The trim is perfect. Well, not quite. It doesn't need a little bit more darkening down, but that's okay. <laughs> so with that Rune Lord Brass and Castellax Bronze mix applied, as you can see, we've got this really nice looking armor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Targor Raid Shade and we're gonna apply this over the top of the trim in our most prominent places. So we're just going to add a little bit of it just here. Like that. We're going to add some of it around here. So with that done, we've now got absolutely fantastic looking armor. So we're going to leave it alone just for a little bit because we're going to get on with the rest of the base coats. Now, the color we're going to be using next is Griff Charge Gray. And we're going to be applying this all over the top of all of the peturges and the various black leather details scattered around him. Now, it's not going to remain this colour, so don't worry. We're just going to apply this all over these details. Just like this. We've got these straps. And cloth. All of these things, just like this. So with all of that Griff Charger Grey applied, we then take some Black Templar and we're gonna apply this over the top. So with that Black Templar all applied, we've actually done some Black Legion just here on this kind of spike coming out of the knee pad there. I completely forgot to do it earlier. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some thinned down Dawnstone and we're going to use this to paint in all of the smooth cables. Scattered around. Angron's body. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors and we're going to apply this over pretty much all of his remaining solid details. So we've got areas such as the chain mail, the chains, the bits of decoration and spikes at the end of the baturges. There's rather a lot of silver here. Again, we're just ignoring the weapons just for the moment. 
get to those. Let's just focus on getting the main man himself done. So with all of that silver applied, we're then going to take some Volupus pink and we're going to apply this over the top of Angron's tongue. And inside his mouth. Doesn't matter if you get this over the top of the teeth. If anything, you can just colour in the teeth. I'll be getting a highlight later on. So with that Volupus pink all applied, we're then going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the skulls. So with that skeleton hoard all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some null oil and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the silver and over the top of our dawnstone tubes. So with that null oil all applied, we've just got one last thing left to do on Angron's body before we can do all the highlights, of course, and that is on this tail. Now, after pouring over the video that we've got of him, I realise that the tail is actually a little bit darker and it blends up into the red of him. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part Saigor brown mix, and we're going to apply this over the top of the tail. like this. And then we're going to wash the brush. And we're just going to absorb some of that towards where his skin would start to kick in. So it blends up into the red. Otherwise, we're then going to go along the rest of the tail. With our cycle brown mix. like this. So with that done, Angron, the man himself, is now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. He's looking pretty awesome. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take him to the next level before we do the weapons. So what we're gonna start is we're gonna start with all the armor. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add that sort of verdigris greenish tint to all of the World Eater sigils. So we've got one here, one here, and we've got one right in there on his belt. And we're going to be using two colours for this. We're going to be using Pterodon Turquoise and Black Templar. And what we want to do is we want to take some Pterodon Turquoise on our brush, first of all. And we basically want to mark out where it's all going to be. But we don't want too much of this on our brush. So we just want to kind of dab this in as well. So we're just going to start applying the pterodon turquoise like this all over this section. Bring it up around there just a little bit and bring it up around there just a little bit as well. Just like that. Then we're going to wash the brush grab a little bit of Black Templar and we're just going to go over the top of that. And 
like so. And then we're going to wash the brush. And finally, with a clean brush, we're just going to go in there and mop some of it up. And redistribute it around. Just like that. And we're going to do this across all three of those sections. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of his armor. Now the color that we're going to be using first to do this is Rune Lord Brass. Now this is going to be a lot more stark in some places than it is in others. But that's exactly what we want. We don't want him to be kind of too bright and clean. What we are going to do though, is just start picking out all of the trim. Like this. And then we're just going to make our way around the model. So with that done, the armor is actually looking fantastic already. It doesn't actually need anything else. So we're going to move on and we're going to take some thinned down iron hand steel. And we're going to use this to highlight all the silver. We're getting all of our big ticket highlighting out of the way. So with all of those silver highlights applied, our model has taken a massive leap forward. He's looking absolutely fantastic. So what we're going to do now is move on to our next big ticket area. And this is going to be all of the skin, excluding the tail. We're going to do that slightly differently. So just hold fire on that just for the moment. But for the rest of him, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down Wild Rider Red. And we're going to start picking out all of the sharp details and edges on all of his face. All of his face, all of his flesh. And around all of his muscles. So with that Wild Rider Red applied, what we're then going to do is take some Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to gently dry brush this over the top of the tail. So with that Evil Sun Scarlet gently dry brushed over the tail, what we're then going to do just to finish off all the skin is we're going to take some thinned down Cadian Flesh Tone and we're going to use this on the absolute sharpest corners of all of his flesh. So for example just around here on the face. We've got all of these little crags and 
lines. So with all of that Cadian flesh tone applied, all of the red flesh is now finished. Angron is looking fantastic. So we're going to move on and finish off his face now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion. And we're going to use this over the top of his eyeballs. And so with that Black Legion all applied, we're then going to take a teeny tiny little dot of Screaming Skull. And we're going to apply this in each corner. Of his eyes. And we're also going to use this to highlight his teeth. So with that Screaming Skull all applied, what we're then going to do is take some Slanesh Grey and we're going to use this to highlight his tongue. So with that done, Angron's face is now finished, as is the rest of his flesh, and he's looking awesome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on and we're going to take some thin down administratum grey and we're going to use this to highlight all of our cables that we originally painted with the Dawnstone. Now it doesn't matter if this kind of turns into more of a relayer on some of them, that's all right. They're actually quite flat in all the product photography I've seen. Quite flat and quite bright. So with that done, all of those smooth cables are now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down Dawnstone. And we're going to use this to highlight all of our remaining black details. So this is areas like these spikes on his tail, his hooves, his hair, all that good stuff. And so with that Dawnstone all applied, just like we've done with all the rest of our black details, we're going to take some Administratum Grey. We're going to add this to the sharpest points on the black details. So with that, you'll be pleased to hear Angron is finished. And we're doing nothing else to him. No, I'm kidding. We're of course going to work on the weapons now. So we're going to work on the axe first and then we're going to work on the sword. Although to be fair, a lot of these things are going to be exactly the same as what we've already done. For example, a lot of silver details here. However, we do have a little bit of extra gold. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Griff Charger Grey first. And we're going to apply this over the top of the soft wraps on both the weapons. There's a lot more that you can see on the axe than you can on the sword, but there's a little bit poking through. Just whilst we're waiting for that Griff Charger Grey to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Rune Lord Brass and we're going to apply this over the top of the skull design around here on the axe.
Now that that Griff Charger Grey is dry, we're going to take some Black Templar. I'm going to apply this over the top, just like we did on all the Peturges and things on Angron. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Iron Warriors and we're going to apply this over the top of the silver mechanical structures on the axe. So this is all this kind of weapon housing around here. Like this. We've got the teeth of the axe itself. Like that sort of thing. And over on our sword, we're going to apply this to the pommel. Like that sort of thing. And over the top of the cross guard. So with all of that Iron Warriors applied, we then take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this over the top of the ribbed cables on the axe. And so with that Black Legion applied, we're then going to take some thins down Retributor armor and we're going to apply this over, well, all of the remaining details on the axe. Like this sort of thing. And on our sword, We've got a couple of little bits of decorations. We've got one just here. Got a little bit of handle just there. Got that little bit just there. And the same goes for the inside. So with that done, we've got all of our base coats on, on the ax and on the majority of the sword. However, there is of course, the matter of that blade and that's what we're going to work on now so we're going to take a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part black legion mix and we're going to apply this all over the top of the flat of the blade and this is going to kind of give us more of a gray but that's exactly what we're after and we're looking for quite a smooth coat here so just be really careful avoid any pools just move that paint around. And so with that Black Legion mix applied, we're then going to take a one-to-one -one mix of Contrast Medium and Black Templar and we're going to apply this over the top. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Griff Charger Grey and we're going to apply this over the top of the entirety 
of the bride. So with that done, we're now going to highlight it. I know it seems a bit out of sequence, but Angron's painting has been a bit out of sequence. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Dawnstone, and we're just going for the blade parts here. We're not worrying about the fiery bit in the middle, which we haven't got to just yet. But trust me, it'll all make sense in just a minute. So we're going to use this Dawnstone to highlight the edges of the blade. So with that Dawnstone highlight applied to the blade, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part flesh terra's red mix. And we're going to apply this as a bit of a glaze and we're going to do a little bit of blending. So what we want to do here is we want to basically get this all over the top of those highlights just there. We want to come up to around about there, just underneath that line. I'm going to bring it all the way down blade just like that then we're going to wash the brush and then on either side of that ridge in the middle we're going to smooth out the transition lift off the excess so it moves from being sort of a dark red to the black And that sort of thing. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to add that fiery effect in there. We've got a bit of flesh terror in red in there, but that's all right. This is all fire. We have a little bit of red here. That's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to use two colors here. We're going to use Bad Moon Yellow and Griffhound Orange. And we're going to start by taking some Bad Moon Yellow. We're just going to apply this over the top of all of this section. Like this. Then we're going to wash the brush, grab a little bit of Griffhound Orange, and we're just going to add this in here and there. Whilst it's still wet. So with that done, on both sides, we can now leave the sword blade alone for a little bit. We can just leave it to dry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, in the interest of time, is we're gonna start shading the rest of those details on the weapons. And the color we're gonna be using first is Agrax Earth Shade. We're gonna be using this over the top of all the Rune Lord Brass and over the top of the Retributor Armor as well. And so with that Agrax Earth Shade applied, we then take Nuln Oil and we apply this over the top of the silver. So with that done, we're then going to take some Targor Raid Shade 
I'm going to use this to add a just a little bit more colour in some additional places. So we're going to add a little bit of Targor Raid Shade just here over the gold. Like that. We're going to add a little Targor Raid Shade over the top of this blade on the back of the axe. that sort of thing. We're going to add a little bit of Targor Raid Shade over the hilt of the sword. And the pommel. And so with that done, Angron is now what I would call... No, I'm only kidding. He's not War Hipster Battle ready. He's way beyond that. But the weapons are at War Hipster Battle ready. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take them to the next level and we're going to finally finish this geezer off. Now, the colours that we're going to be using first to do this are Pterodon Turquoise and Black Templar. We're going to be doing the same kind of verdigris-ish greeny effect that we did here on the shoulder on this kind of skull formation on the, on the, on the axe. So we're going to take that Pterodon Turquoise on our brush and we're just going to start applying this over the top of our skulls, like that. We're going to wash the brush, grab a little bit of Black Templar, and then we're just going to come in here and start moving the paint around, mixing the two together. Then we're going to wash the brush. And we're going to take some of it away. Like that. And we're going to do this on this section and on the back. So with that Pterodon Turquoise and Black Templar all applied, we're then going to take some thin down Rune Lord Brass. And we're going to use this to highlight the gold. So with that Rune Lord Brass all applied, what we then do is we take some thin down Iron Hand Steel and we use this to highlight all the silver. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some In Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to use this to highlight the areas around the fiery bits. As well as the red areas on the edges. In kind of a... spot motion, spot motion? Spot highlight kind of way. Just like that sort of thing. So with that done, we then take some Screaming Skull and we're going to apply this at the sharpest points in amongst the fire. Just kind of picking out little parts of the skulls. And so finally, just to finish off the sword, we're going to take some Administratum Grey and we're going to apply this to the sharpest points. So with that done, 
We're just gonna add one last thing to Angron himself, because he is finished. But what we are gonna do is, it's only right, we're gonna add some blood for the blood god. Now we're not gonna add very much. We're just gonna take small amounts of this on our brush and just in the, chain blades, we're just going to stipple this in, brush it very roughly, we're not looking to kind of oversaturate, just want to add that kind of, just a little tiny little bit. Of course if you want to you can just go absolutely nuts but slowly. I think about there is probably where I'd like it. Like that. So with that done, Angron is now finished. He looks absolutely fantastic. All that's left to do is his base. Now you could do this any way that you want, but I'm going to be just quickly showing you how I do it. It's actually quite simple. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some rattling grime and I'm going to layer this all over the top of the rocks. So with that rattling grime all applied, we then take some black templar and apply this over the top of all the soil. So with that black templar all applied, it's then skeleton horde time. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of the bones. It's a lot of bones, not quite as many as Horus Ascended, but still a lot of bones. Anyway, what we're going to do now is going to paint in the helmets. And well, you could do this in the color of any Space Marine chapter you wanted, but I'm going to do them in Dark Angels because, well, I've done them on the same thing on the Lord Invocatus, and I feel like I should have a little bit of consistency here. The box art does do them in Blood Angels, which makes sense, but we've already done a lot of red. I'm going to be using Dark Angel's Green for this. But of course you can do this any way you want. And there's two helmets. There's one just here. And there's another one way over there. So with that done, we then take some thinned down Iron Warriors. We use this to paint in all of the metallic details on the base. And so with that done, we then take some Agrax Earthshade and we use this to just basically break up some of the skulls. Just, we don't do all of it, we just add a little bit of Agrax Earthshade here and there. Just add a little bit of variation. You know we love a bit of variation. So with that Agrax Earthshade applied, I don't think I mentioned it, I also applied this over the top of the metallics. What we're going to do next is we're going to take some Astro Granite Debris and we're going to apply this all over the top of all that negative space that we don't have any sculpted plastic details on. So now that that Astro Granite Debris is now all dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Black Templar and we're gonna apply this over the top of it. So 
So with that Black Templar all applied, we're then gonna take some Tyrant Skull and we're gonna dry brush this over the top of the entire base, including all the skulls, all the rocks, all the metallics, and the helmet. So with that Tyrant Skull dry brush all applied, we're then gonna take some brown four millimeter tufts available from Gamers Grass, which you can pick up from Firestorm Games in the link below in the description. Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna peel off some of these and we're just gonna stick them straight on like that. I figured it would kind of reinforce that sort of burnt grass, infernal, kind of vibe that I'm after with these guys. So we just, oop. That's stuck to the tweezers. So we're gonna pop them around, scattered like that. And what we can also do is we can take the odd one here or there, and we'll just pop it in the rocks. Like that sort of thing. And so with the base now complete after a rim of Abaddon Black has been applied, Angron is now finished. The demon Primarch of Corn and Primarch of the World Eaters. I genuinely think this might be the best model I've ever painted. Aside from Archaon maybe. Funny how they're both chaos. <laughs> I'm ever so pleased with it. I think it looks fantastic. I cannot wait to use him in games alongside my corn demons for which you can find tutorials for all of that here on YouTube as well. Who'd have thought? If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.